Hi everyone, I'm Tim and you're watching The Man Who Planted Potatoes. And this week things have gone bad. Right, let's get into it. Spuds update. So everything was going okay and I know I was struggling with potato blight a little bit, but I was getting on top of that with the pruning. And then on Tuesday night, we had a thunderstorm. And at one point, all the lights in my house went out. Now I was involved in an important Zoom call at the time, which I had to keep trying to reconnect to while this thunderstorm was going on. But as soon as that was done, I rushed outside to have a look at the plants. And things were a bit messy. The shallots survived fine. The leeks were obviously indoors, so they didn't suffer. The beans were okay, and now they've got bigger poles, so yeah, they're doing really well now. But when I had a look at the potatoes and the tomatoes, the rain, or the sleet, was so heavy that as it fell, it had actually fired the soil out of the pots. So there was me, out there, in the middle of a thunderstorm, trying to re-earth all these plants. I was out there with my coat on, with my hood up, like getting pelted by sleet and with thunder and lightning crashing around me. Now I think about it, it probably wasn't the smartest thing I ever did to go out there, but now it has done some pretty serious damage to the tomatoes and the potatoes, particularly the tomato plants. And since then, we've had rain most days and the temperature has been a lot lower and the tomato plants have really suffered. They're dying and shriveling up and there's brown patches all over the leaves. And I'm genuinely not sure whether it is the temperature or whether the potato blights moved over onto the tomatoes. I don't know if that's a thing. Does that happen? I've got a couple of tomato plants that are still indoors and they do seem to be surviving over. Okay, but the ones outside, I, I, I have very little hope for them. And I know I said I'd gotten on top of the blight problems a little bit with the potatoes, but the leaves growing back on the potatoes still do have the blight in them, which shouldn't be a huge problem, but it is going to affect how much more they can grow. But the real tragedy is these tomato plants. I just can't see them growing properly now. And this is something worth knowing. So next time I have a look at the tomato plants, I need to know that not only can you grow them indoors in this country, but really you have to grow them indoors in this country. And of course, the other thing worth saying is that it doesn't always go right. You know, even a failed experiment is an experiment. And part of being a gardener is getting things wrong. You know, sometimes plants don't grow because uh, the weather took a turn or, or the temperature wasn't right for them or the conditions weren't okay or the neighbor's children kicked their football next door and knocked over your plant pot. And while of course it is upsetting and some people do get angry about it, it's nothing you didn't sign up for when you became a gardener. The crucial thing is to learn from what happened for next time. So yeah, we'll just see what happens with these tomatoes. This story also has another gardener's trap in it that you have to be careful of, jealousy. Because in the middle of my potato and tomato related stresses, my mate Will got in touch and sent me these pictures. These are Will's potatoes that he's been growing on his allotment. These are called Aaron Victory potatoes. Now don't they look glorious? And accompanying them was this message. Hi Tim, here I am with my Aaron Victory potatoes interplanted with self-seeded Swiss chard. I don't earth up, I just plant them really deep. Works fine, especially with the chard. More digging at the beginning and the end, but none in the middle. They are just beginning to flower. Lovely purple potato. Will. Now let me tell you, when you're staring at a pot full of uprooted potatoes and manky dying tomatoes and your mate sends you these beauties, it can't help dying inside a little bit. But again, everyone is on their own gardening journey. So it's not about you comparing yourself to other people. It's about learning from other people. So let's look at Will's way of working. So Will doesn't earth them up, he just plants them very, very deep. And maybe that suits Aaron Victory and Swiss chard potatoes. As opposed to the potatoes I'm growing, which are, um, yeah, we'll come back to that. But seriously, look at that beautiful white flower on those potatoes. So thank you so much for sending those in, Will. You have put my potatoes to shame and I wish you much happiness growing and presumably eating them. And if any of you are growing anything at home, please do send me pictures. You can send it to the man who planted potatoes at gmail.com or just tag me in a picture on social media. And on that note, on YouTube, thank you to Nelly for your comment on last week's video. On Facebook, thank you to Rachel and Rick. On Instagram, thank you to Kirsty, R. Wayne, Randall Tor4, J. Ward Pix, and Lee Jackson691. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It really, really does make a difference. Okay, everyone, it's time for this week's indoor ideas. And the first thing I want to do on this indoor ideas is to ask, what does this thing look like? The closest I can get is the octopus from Finding Dory. I also thought maybe an alien or something from Monsters Inc. The BBC says Sputnik, but I just can't put my finger on it. Any ideas? This is a kohlrabi. Wikipedia says kohlrabi, also called German turnip, 
is a biennial vegetable, a low stout cultivator of wild cabbage. So it turns out German engineering was a thing as far back as the 1500s. Nice one, guys. Kohlrabi are fast growing. You can plant them anytime from March to July. So there's still time. Get out there, get potting your kohlrabis, guys. You can grow them from a seed and they take about 60 days to grow. And there's various kind of cool recipes you can use them for. The BBC has got quite a lot of good food recipes involving kohlrabi. It seems like it can kind of take the place of cabbage a lot, but never mind any of that. The reason you're going to grow kohlrabi is because you get to grow an octopus on your windowsill. I mean, look at this thing. Look at it. Just, oh my God. Can you imagine inviting your mates around to your flat, them coming into your kitchen and going, what is that? And you just being there like, oh yeah, this is just my kohlrabi I grew. I think this thing looks very exciting, very colourful and a lot of fun. And not that much work either. The main problems you have with cabbage is pests. And the biggest pests for cabbage are birds. Now you might still get cabbage root fly in the UK and there's a number of sort of online articles written about how to deal with that. But actually I think you'd save yourself a lot of problems by bringing them indoors and keeping them away from the birds. So there you go, kohlrabi. Check it out, look it up. Bit of a curveball there, probably weren't expecting that, were you? Mm -hmm. And perhaps an interesting alternative. So that's all from me this week. If you have ideas or questions or answers or comments about anything you've seen in this video or any of the other videos, please, please, please do feel free to get in touch. You can comment right down here on YouTube. You can email me at themanwhoplantedpotatoes at gmail.com or you can get in touch on social media. On Facebook and Twitter, I am at manplanted and on Instagram, I am just at themanwhoplantedpotatoes. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe right down here on YouTube. There should be a subscribe box somewhere around here, I think. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. It really, really, really does make a difference, and I'll see you all next week.